Hello everyone. Today what we're going to be doing is uh, giving you the do's and don'ts of creating illustrations for your children's book. Um, the first thing that we're going to look at is our pacing. Now I want you to think about how you'd like the text to be broken up in your picture book. You don't want them to have too much text on one page and not enough on the next, unless there's a really good reason. And one good book that exhibits this is um, Where the Wild Things Are uh, by Maurice Sandar, Sen sorry, Sendak. And you could take a look here and you could see how there's t very little words on each page, but then he does a really good job of using excellent pace because at the following pages there's no words at all and it's like that for a few now if you're really creative with that you can do that as well in your books it sends a very different message so for six full pages there's no words he tells the story through pictures alone until you get to the next page. Now I want you to think about um, your sketches next. Some illustrators do very detailed, neat sketches, and if you take a look at this, there's a lot of detail that goes into these illustrations. Um, I want you to work in a way that's best for you. Do make sure, however, that your sketches clearly convey the characters, actions and setting. Um, here's another example of uh, very simple illustrations and very little color is added as well. This book is uh, Red is Best by Kathy Stinson. Uh, the illustrator is Robin Baird Lewis and you can see how it's just very simple um, Maybe three colors are used on each page. Now it's, it's best to also make sure that the action so uh, that's on the page always runs from left to right. And here's another example. Um, this one here is a magic school bus. And their illustrations are very, very detailed. Sometimes it can be a little too busy on a page and you want to avoid doing that. But you can see how, just like we read, we read from left to right on a page, your illustrations should also um, show that same way. It encourages the reader to turn the page. The next thing I want you to take a look at is your page layout. Here's a, a book titled Alice the Fairy as an example by David Shannon. And David Shannon's one of my favorite illustrators and writers because of the colorful pictures um, that go along with the words. And he uses the full complete pages from edge to edge you can see it goes all the way down, almost off of the page. So borders aren't an issue for him. You could use a border, and here's an example of that. This one's in one of my favorite books, A Bad Case of Stripes, and again, it's by David Shannon. And in here, let me just move this around a little bit. Um, you can see that there's a border around every page. I'm going to use the same book again to explain to you a little bit about um, how the placement of the words, he used the words on the left and the pictures are all on the right, but he mixes it up in this book. So even though you still have the borders along the edges, the white border, he can incorporate the words into the actual page itself or he flips back and forth where it's just the words again on the left and all of the pictures are on the right. When you're creating your book, keep in mind, um, this is what they call the gutter. So you wanna make sure, just like in bowling, you wanna keep all of your important things out of the gutter. 
Um, and that's where the binding will take place. So when you bind a book, you have to make sure that you leave enough space on the edges so that the binding, however way you want to do it, will not affect any of the pictures or cut off any of the words. Here's an example too. Now this was a book that I had written as an example. And I made sure that when I bound it, because this is one of the ways that you could do it, you could buy these rings and uh, staples. And when I drew my pictures, I kind of laid them out side by side on the paper so they would match and it would be a continuous picture. But I had to be very cautious of the fact that I didn't want to cut it off when I had bound it. And that the pictures that are on the edges aren't as important as the ones that are in the center. And you can see this is another example of that. And I used David Shannon as an influence where he tends to take the picture off of the page. The uh, last thing that we're going to look at is our covers. Now, <laughs> you want to make sure that your cover stands out so that any of the readers or the people that are buying the books will be attracted to your book. And this is one of the ones that I find I was attracted to. It's very colorful. The pictures are uh, bright and big. And it sort of makes me drawn to the book to want to read what this is all about especially when it's a title that is unfamiliar to me. So you wanna make sure that it has a catchy, bold, unique, and something that will invite the shoppers to view what's inside. Here's another one that I find really cute. Um, the pictures itself called Parts and how the title matters. You want it to, to jump off of the page. And the picture is something that, you know, makes you wonder what exactly parts are you talking about? His second book, More Parts, which is even more dramatic from the first. So there you go. Uh, I hope you take these tips and apply them into uh, creating your own interesting books. Uh, and